Hi. Welcome back. Um, yeah, happy what? What is it? July 8th. So I'm Allison Apsey, and this is our YouTube Live book talk about the path to serendipity. And this is our third time together. The first time we talked about the introduction and the foreword and the preface, and then we talked about the first stop last time, which is the first chapter. And this time, we are going to talk about the second stop, which is a need-satisfying marriage. I love this quote, you guys. It starts off the chapter. Marriage is like twirling a baton, turning handsprings, or eating with chopsticks. It looks easy until you try it. And that's a quote by Helen Rowland. Oh, <laughs> I convinced Jim just to come on and say hi. You say uh, hi. <laughs> how are you? So this is my husband, Jim. Um, he's not into this... Um, YouTube live, Facebook live stuff like I am. So it was a little bit of pulling teeth to get him to, to come in, but he just wanted to say hi. He does exist. I do. <laughs> hi, everyone. All right, I'll let you off Bye, the hook. Everyone. <laughs> so um, I want to read just a little bit of the beginning of the chapter to you. Hi, Charlie. He's so slow. So it says... Husband loves to golf, fish, and hunt. What, wife loves to say, I love you, a hundred times a day and snuggle under warm blankets, talking for hours and sharing hopes and dreams of the future. Husband feels smothered and itches for freedom. Wife feels neglected and wants to be feverishly loved. Who is right? Who is wrong? And in the chapter, I talk about um, the chance meeting of... Um, Jim and me at a dance club my freshman year of college. It's called the Orbit Room, and it was like grunge night at the Orbit Room, and we were dancing and having a great time. So I'm just going to tell you this funny story. Um, and I had just moved, well, a couple months before I had moved into an apartment with some girlfriends, and I saw a friend from high school there, and she's like, well, give me your new number. And like, we didn't have cell phones back then. This was 1995. And so I got a, a napkin and I don't know if I wrote with lipstick or I found a pen or whatever. And then by the time I wrote my number down, she was nowhere to be found. So I just, you know, carried on with the night and dancing, having a good time with my friends. And I was just walking across the dance floor and I spotted this, this guy with like long hair, super grungy. <laughs> um, and he caught my eye. And so I turned around and then we were dancing and having a great time. Until my girlfriend came up and said, hey, Allison, it's time to leave. I'm like, oh, man, like we're having so much fun. Really? Do we have to go? And she's like, yes, we need to go. She's like, give me your number. I'm like, oh, oh my gosh, I have my number in my pocket. So I just pulled it out of my pocket and handed it to him. And I have never lived that story down. Now I'm telling all of you because Jim thinks that I just went around dance clubs with my numbers stuffed in like 10 of my numbers stuffed into my pocket. In fact, he didn't believe that it actually could be my real number. So he called me like at two o'clock that night to see. And my friends that I lived with were like, eh, I don't know, this guy calls you like on, at two in the morning, the day that you met. Like that sounds kind of weird. You hear my dog barking. Um, but anyways, that was like the beginning of what now we've been together. Well, that was 1995. And it's so that's like t over 23 years. 23 and a half years. Um, we were dating and then um, for a couple of years and then engaged for a couple of years. And then, so we are, we'll be married 20 years in April, which is crazy, 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 crazy. And like, I have to tell you guys, marriage is hard. It is one of the most challenging relationships, the most rewarding, um, you know, the one that I'm so grateful to have and wouldn't change it for the world. But I think maybe even Jim and I have some unique challenges. So I just wanna go back to talk about William Glasser's five basic needs because it was serendipitous that I learned about choice theory, William Glasser's choice theory in our first year of marriage because I don't know unless we began to understand each other if we would have made it because we are so different. So. The, the five basic needs, if you remember, I'm sorry about my dog. Can you hear him? 
<laughs> so they are, you can like um, put a little message in the chat or ask a question too, feel free to do that. I have like um, going for a bike ride here, so sorry about that. Um, so the five basic needs, sorry, I digress. They're free or um, survival, remember, because the thumb is different than the other needs. This is this need to physically survive. And these are like our, our emotional needs. And then there's belonging, which we call people to us with this finger. So that represents belonging. Um, power is this finger because standing alone, that finger sends a pretty powerful message, right? I won't do it, but yes. This finger stands for freedom because when we have a ring on it, maybe it limits our freedom a little bit. And then the pinky is our little fun guy. So we all have these, we're all born with these five basic needs. And we're born with varying levels, varying tanks for the needs. So some of us might have a really high need for love and belonging. And some of us might have not as high need for love and belonging. Like we're okay with like not being loved by the world. Like I think, I mean, this is like case in point. Like I want to be loved by the world, right? Like I'm putting myself out there in this way. And Jim like doesn't even want to come stand next to me because that is just not, it's not important to him. It's not a part of like his reality. So though we have those five basic needs. I have the needs, Jim has the needs. And um, what I learned about him, I discovered like, oh my gosh, I have this high need for love and belonging. I have a relatively high need for survival. Um, I have a pretty high need for power. Like I don't think you become a teacher and then a principal if you don't have a little bit of a need for power. Um, and then there's Jim who has not a very high need for love and belonging, this huge high need for freedom. So then when like, when you have these two different people coming together in a marriage, actually Dr. Glasser and his wife, his second wife, Carlene Glasser wrote a book called Getting Together and Staying Together. And they said that the combination of needs that Jim and I have are really a recipe for disaster. So because I have this high need for love and belonging, like I want to be connected, like, and I'm pretty sure like Jim would want me to meet my need for love and belonging, like with him, right? Um, and then Jim has this high need for freedom. And then, so if he's off golfing, hunting, fishing, I say that he once was even in a ping pong league, which he laughs at me. He's like, it wasn't really a ping pong league, but I'm like, you were going every week to play ping pong. That kind of sounds like a ping pong league to me. So he has all of these things going on, um, all of these activities that he wants to do. He's huge into snowmobiling, like loves all that stuff. And then I'm like, I like to talk for hours and I like to read and write and connect. And, and so Jim's like, get off me, woman. And I'm like, oh, you're leaving me again. Like, I'm so, you know, so, but then once we began to learn choice theory and being a talker, you guys know that. Jim, of course, learned choice theory right alongside me and began to understand, okay, like this is what Allison needs. It's not because she's this clingy, crazy woman. It's because she has a high need for love and belonging and wants to feel like that connection always. And then on the opposite end, you know, I'm thinking like, okay, this is what Jim needs. It's not that he's trying to get away from me necessarily, right? It's that he's trying to meet his need for freedom even when he's like in, in a marriage and, and has a family and a relationship. So understanding that about he, each other has been um, so helpful. Like I can tell you with 100% certainty that my marriage is not perfect, that we go through ups and downs all the time, um, but that, you know, that our love for each other is still just as strong and we both want, we both fight to have the kind of relationship that we believe each other deserves. Like, I feel like Jim deserves like a great love story and, and a need satisfying relationship. And, um, he feels like I deserve like someone who's going to help me be the very best that I can be and that I deserve a great relationship. And we fight for that, um, all the time, even though we're really very different people. And I've heard from a lot of different Paths of Serendipity readers that um, you connect with this idea. And if it's not a marriage, then it might be a different relationship. Like maybe your relationship with your mom, maybe you have differing needs or maybe the same needs. You know, it, th th those different relationships play out differently in our lives. It might be your best friend, it might be a colleague, but really thinking about, okay, where do, what are the strength of my needs? How much, 
like survival do I need? So we can ask ourselves questions um, to maybe to understand that. There's, I, I presented on this the other day and somebody asked me, is there a quiz you can take that would help you understand the strength of your needs? And there's not necessarily a quiz, but there are questions online that you could, if you Google it, you could ask yourself to try to figure out but how strong your needs are. But basically like if you want to have like a super healthy bank account, like that would make you really nervous not to have a healthy bank account. If you um, don't like to take or do activities that would involve physical risk, um, if you're nervous about your physical well-being a lot, that might indicate that you have a higher need for survival. And if you're a person who like money flows freely through you, um, you don't worry about having a healthy bank account, you, you are willing to do a lot of activities that involve physical risks, you don't really think about like your physical well-being that often, you might have a lower need for survival. For um, love and belonging, if you want to be with people all the time and it's really important to like hear their acceptance and um, feel like you belong, then you might have a high need for love and belonging. If that's not as important to you, a lower need for love and belonging. And you can continue on and go through the different needs, power, freedom, and fun. And fun is um, interesting in a discussion that we had at a, the workshop I um, did the other day where fun, Dr. Glasser's fun is not enjoyment. It's not like doing something that you enjoy. It's being playful and laughing. So if you are, if you love to be playful and goofy, goof around and laugh, then you might have a high need for fun. And if that's not that important to you, you have a lower need for fun. And none of that is bad. Like having the high need for power even doesn't mean that you need to be like a power monger and be overpowering people. Um, you can empower people. You can meet your need for power through achievement. There's so many ways to meet your need for power without interfering with somebody else, somebody else meeting their needs. And that's essentially what we're talking about. We're talking about meeting our own needs in a way that not only doesn't interfere with somebody we love meeting their needs, but also um, maybe even helps create an environment where they can meet their needs. Like if I know I have a colleague or someone who has a high need for power, um, turning power over to them is actually kind of empowering to me if I'm making that conscious decision. Um, and then your need for freedom, like if you need to be alone, if you need to have a lot of choice um, in your life, like those are indicate indicators of having a high need for freedom. If you, if you like to go off and do lots of different activities, you might have a high need for freedom. So in this stop, I also talk, we also talk a little bit about um, this section, which is teachers have needs too. And it's really about creating a need satisfying environment at school for teachers. And um, I love that the path to serendipity is really appealing, like across professions that teachers and um, educational leaders have really connected with it, but also that people in other professions have really connected with it. So you can just take this section that's about creating a need satisfying environment for teachers and pull it and extrapolate it, put it in any kind of setting, um, any kind of work setting. So the serendipitous lessons at the end of this chapter are, ready? You sure? Okay. All behavior is purposeful, even golfing, hunting, and ping pong, which that one Jim just laughs at all the time. We are all born with five basic needs, their power, belonging, freedom, fun, and survival. We all have them. We all behave to meet them. That's why we go to back, back to all behaviors purposeful. We're always behaving in a way to meet one or four of those, one or more of those five basic needs. Um, another concept that Dr. Glasser talks about is that like in our head, we have this recipe card file, like, oh, like I'm, I need freedom. Like my, my um, tank, my freedom tank is like feeling depleted. So we might go to this recipe card file of behaviors in our head that have helped us meet that need for freedom in the past. And so that's why um, one of the reasons why it's hard to break cycles of behavior. So if I'm meeting my need for power by, you know, let's just say in a marriage by, you know, getting after Jim about some things that really bother me about him um, and that has worked, you know, even though it causes some hurt and angst in our relationship, when I need power and Jim's around, I might pull that out and do the same thing. And so we have to make a conscious decision of, okay, that might help me meet my need for power, but it does not help my relationship. So how can I meet my need for power 
and support my husband and my relationship. And the same is true for any relationships we have, for colleagues, for children, anybody. Okay, so another serendipitous lesson. Um, are the, the needs are like separate internal gas tanks and our tanks are all different sizes. We cannot meet someone else's needs, but we can help create an environment where they can meet their own needs. So that's super important. I can't meet Jim's needs. I can't meet the needs of the teachers at Quincy Elementary. I can't even meet my children's needs, but I can create an environment where they can meet their own needs. And the last one is, I love tall, sweaty guys with chin length hair who can dance to grunge music. Um, and so and at the end of each stop along the path to serendipity, uh, we ask some reflection questions. So this reflection question is, what relationships were you thinking of as you read this chapter? Share your story at hashtag path number two serendipity. So I would love any of you watching um, or any of you readers to share your connections at that hashtag. Because again, I'm gonna say like at the end of every time I talk with you guys, this book, it's not about me. It is about you. When you read this book, you, you are reflecting on your own relationships, on your own life, on your own values, on your own workplace. This book is absolutely 100% about you. And I have been like so blessed beyond measure to be able to be on this journey with you. So thank you so very much. And I look forward to our next book talk, which is going to be after the National Principals Conference. I'm going there this week. I'm super excited. The third stop, oh, it's one of my favorites. It's called A New Definition of Respect. And it has a story. I was bullied in, um, in high school and it has um, that story in it. So I hope you join me next week, same time, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, um, Sunday. What will it be? July 15th. You guys, after the 4th of July, just summer just poofs away. So thank you so much for joining me. Mwah! Have a great week.